Hello, everyone. Welcome to the fourth Doctor of Engineering DNG conference. This is the first session on day two. I'm Dr. Xiaoxiao Wang, a civil engineering lecturer at EIT based in Melbourne campus. So this session will start with the first workshop in this DNG conference, followed, followed by a close the door presentations by our DNG students. Finally, we will have the last expert talk in this DNG conference before we conclude this session. Well, let's start with the workshop with the title of AI Tools for Research. I would like to introduce the presenter, Dr. Melind Siddhapura, before I hand over to him. Dr. Melind Siddhapura is currently coordinating a couple of courses and he's on campus lecturer in mechanical engineering at EIT based in Perth campus. Dr. Melind Siddhapura has gained over 18 years of substantial and uh, international significant ex experience in mechanical engineering while working as an academic in top Australian and overseas universities. He obtained his PhD in mechanical engineering from University of Western Australia and uh, has won many prestigious awards. He has published articles and served as a reviewer in high impact inter international journals he has taught mechanical engineering as well as multidisciplinary subjects and supervised engineering students at bachelor, master, and doctorate levels. In his current roles as a course coordinator in engineering at EIT, he has been instrumental in developing, enhancing, and the quality control of the bachelor and the master of engineering courses in mechanical and the civil engineering disciplines at the macroscopic and the microscopic levels. He has significantly contributed to the development of a doctor in engineering course which, which is becoming highly popular with professional engineers wanting to advance their careers to the next level. He's a passionate educator and an advocate for the flipped classroom approach and active, active learning principles. He promotes a cooperative learning environment in the classroom using intelligent inst instructional strategies. He has expertise in face-to-face, -face, blended and fully online delivery modes in engineering. He has expertise in the accreditation and uh, compliance processes of the courses with TAXA, Engineering Australian and a few international accreditation bodies. Well, let's see. Let's welcome Dr. Melind. Sorry. Uh, I will share the slides. Yeah, Melind, it's over to you. Thank you very much, Rasa, for my uh, wonderful introduction. I'm a bit humbled. And uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, doesn't matter where you are. And uh, welcome to my workshop, uh, which is the first workshop in the NG conference, the fourth DNG conference. And uh, this workshop is about AI tools for research. And as we all know, you know, AI is buzzing everywhere. And there are millions of tools there, millions of websites and uh, to, to explore your options for AI, right? But it's really hard to actually find out few tools which are really useful when you're doing a research, you know, research or doctorate degree or research writing a research paper and so on. So I'm trying uh, to give you some useful information, hopefully. And uh, let's begin. So Shasha, Dr. Shasha has already introduced me, so I don't need to introduce myself now. And let's straight away dig into it. So in this slide, you would see this agenda here. So uh, I'm introduced already, and uh, I'll be actually referring to EIT's AI policy, and I'll be introducing to a padlet, uh, which would have uh, lots of information in it. And uh, the key agenda of this workshop is to go through different sections of research because when you start a doctorate or a PhD, what you want to do is you want to really understand the research topic first when you start it, right? 
So we'll be understanding the research topic. Then uh, we'll be looking at how to write in terms of using uh, AI tools, writing uh, with uh, literature review and summary of your research. Then writing part two would be data analysis and graphics, how to draw that, how to you know, make your research more, more interactive, more visible. And finally, how to uh, you know, publish research papers using AI tools. So those are the key uh, agenda items or key items I would like to uh, show you today. And at the end, we would do some Q&A and I would like to seek your feedback as well. So with that in mind, I don't have any more slides because I'm going to actually uh, share my screen. I'm going to show you a Padlet. The Padlet has the links and the resources within it. So let me share it now. Okay. Uh, can anyone confirm if you can see this padlet my screen <clears throat> yes very good very very good okay so uh, this is the padlet which is kind of a hosting platform where you can actually set up few resources on it and uh, the, the resources are very handy even participants can actually open these resources from there and I, i'll explain how so first of all uh, welcome to this workshop ai tools for research uh, first thing i would like to go through is the eit's ai policy so when you are doing a doctorate within eit you need to know what is the AI policy with EIT. So please always go through the AI policy, which is given in this link here. And uh, uh, it would actually explain you how to ethically use in what instances can you use AI or in what instances you cannot use or shouldn't use AI in your research. So make sure you are well versed with that because the tools I'm going to show you today are more like supporting tools for your research. Uh, so use those these tools with caution because some people would say, okay, I will write my thesis with an AI tool, whole thesis. No, that's not ethical. You can't really use AI to write everything for you because you are the one who is actually doing a doctorate or you are writing a research paper. So you are the content creator and then you can help get the help from AI tools to actually make your research more impactful and it would actually increase the efficiency of research writing and doing research basically, okay? So <clears throat> first of all, what can you do? Thank you, Sasha, for sharing the policy link here. Uh, what I want you to do now, if you have a mobile phone or any device, I want you to scan this QR code here. When you scan this, you'll be actually able to access this Padlet at your end on your device. So I give you a few seconds to, you know, lift your phone, scan this QR code and get onto the Padlet. And give me a thumbs up in the chat box once you access the Padlet on your device. Thank you, Shasha, Vishal. Yes, Abel, yep. You can just do your hands up uh, if you can't write a chat message. Thank you, Mohammed. Thanks, Garth. So after you do this, after you are on this Padlet, I have a question for you. Thank you, Dipali. Have you ever used uh, any AI tool? If yes, which ones? So on the Padlet, I want you to click yes or no, and then write which AI tool have you been using? So for that, you would be, need to actually uh, type in the message, either write in the chat box here in the Blackboard, or you can actually write it uh, in the comment section on the right hand side on the Padlet. Up to you. So click yes or no. And if you are writing yes, can you please type in which AI tools have you been using so far? <clears throat> yeah. 
Yes, I, I'm seeing uh, someone has written chat GPT. Abel is saying I'm not using any. I haven't used any. <clears throat> Can you please click yes or no and then write the name if you have said yes. <clears throat> Over the saying chat GPT and Vitasonic. Oh, that's a new one. As someone has used Copilot. Very nice. Thank you, Hari, uh, Copilot and ChatGPT. Very nice. So, and Igor is saying Gemini and ChatGPT. Thank you, Igor. ADME. Good. Let's see. It seems that almost everyone has used some type of AI tool. So I can see out of five words, 100% of you have used either ChatGPT, Gemini, you know, Copilot and some other generic uh, tools. Now you can definitely use ChatGPT and Gemini and Copilot even for your research. That's doable because these 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 have vast resources attached to it, so it can actually go through all of these uh, you know, search engines and actually find out something for you. But these are not really the AI tools designed for search. So I'm going to show you some specific tools which are actually very useful in research. So as I said, there are three categories of research, right? Uh, so first of all, thank you everyone for participating in the quiz question here and uh, I'm moving forward. So looking at this first section, which is understanding the research topic. Let's say you have just begun your, your, your DNG and you are about to actually explore what the topic is all about. You might have selected, let's say quantum mechanics, some, some subtopic in a quantum mechanics you like to really uh, you know, dig deeper and do research and achieve your uh, DNG thesis. But you really don't understand the topic yet because you have just begun, you're trying to explore what is quantum, what is mechanics, uh, how does everything work in that area? In that case, these are the AI tools which are quite useful in, in letting you explore and understand the basic concepts in that particular research area. So I would highly recommend the first one, which is Heuristica. Now Heuristica is, let me actually open up Heuristica right here, is kind of an AI tool which allows you to create mind maps. Now these mind maps you can create uh, and you can see an example showing here or here, let's say quantum computing or computing quantum mechanics. It will allow you to ask basic questions like what is quantum mechanics? What are the pros? What are the cons? And uh, how can you compare two different uh, methods of quantum mechanics, for example? And you can actually drag and drop all of this information on a huge map. And uh, you can basically compare, you can you can do a lot of things, you can get extract and, and so on. So I would highly encourage you to use, uh, you know, Heuristica to actually learn about the basic, uh, basic uh, you know, concepts and basic uh, definitions, uh, the pros, the cons, and, and variety of such smaller things which are really needed to actually understand the concept first. So Heuristica is the first AI tool. I would uh, encourage you to try at your end. So that's that. And next one is consensus. So uh, consensus is actually kind of a research tool. I mean, a search tool. So normally if you have a question, let's say if you've got a question that what, in, what is quantum mechanics? Yeah, you can ask that question to Google, Google search. Yep, yeah. but what will happen in a Google search? It will actually uh, show you some, some advertisements and some branded things and sponsored content. On the other hand, you can actually search it on Google Scholar. Google Scholar will give you some papers related to that question or answer. It won't let you actually summarize or, or give you the answer which you are looking for. So consensus is nothing but it's an amalgamation of Google search and Google Scholar and also AI helping you get through your research question. So let's say I'm asking what is quantum mechanics? Yeah, so if, when, when I'm asking that, it would actually produce 
uh, a lot of things. So it will actually go through peer reviewed papers to give you the answer. It will also help you use in a copilot. If you have struggled copilot on, it will give you answer on copilot. So copilot is already built in into consensus and it will then start answering your question that what is quantum mechanics is the fundamental theory blah 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 whatever and then it will also suggest you uh, from which paper it was taken so it will usually use highly cited papers to give your answer yep you can actually refer to that particular paper you can save it in a, in a gallery in your collection over there so it is basically Google Scholar plus Google Search plus AI all in one to answer your research questions. So that's consensus. Uh, I'd like to quickly check. Uh, does it make sense, guys? Give me a thumbs up if you really are following through what I'm trying to convey here. A thumbs up, smiley face, or, or ask me a question if you have any so far. Okay, nice, very good, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, then we have this two more uh, AI tools for understanding the research topic. Now, both of these are similar, so I'll go for chat PDF. Now, you might, have, you might be wondering, what is chat PDF? I have heard about chat GPT, what is chat PDF? Now, GPT, you are just searching up on, on, a, on a very huge, bank of resources right chat you know, gpt is using but chat pdf is actually you can chat with your pdf so let's say while exploring hundreds of papers you come across a one really good paper really good paper and you, you really want to understand it inside out but you have some limitations because you are new in the research what you can do you can actually upload a pdf here the pdf of the paper which you really really want to uh, understand thoroughly you can upload it and you can ask question to that pdf and it would actually extract some basic answers or summaries of questions you have asked so far so let's let's try it um opening chat pdf here hopefully i'm logging it's it's very easy you just need to drag and drop your pdf here so let's say i'm actually uploading one of uh, the paper I have published along with my colleagues uh, Indu and uh, Dr. Arti. So now this is the paper, right? I have uploaded. Now I'm asking questions. Okay, it's talking about current state of research in application of disruptive technologies in engineering education. So I'd like to know what are the disruptive technologies used here. So I'm asking a question to chat PDF and it will tell you straight away. It may be, you know, 90 pages long paper. I want to know what are the key things. So now it gives me answer that it, it actually talks about VR, AR, MOOCs, AI, and all of these technologies. And then I can ask a very specific question up to you, how you like to ask it. Uh, what are the pros and cons of VR? Let's see. Now, it has actually gone through the paper and gave me key ideas because my focus could be just on VR, virtual reality. And I would like to know what this paper is talking about in terms of the pros and the cons. So I hope that makes sense. It's a very simple process. Upload the PDF you really want to under, understand fully. Ask questions, ask specific questions because some part of the paper you might not be able to fully understand. You can say, can you please explain this sentence? You can just copy that sentence and say, can you please explain this sentence? And it would try to explain you that as well. Okay, so that completes the first section called understanding the research topic. Now, once you have fully understood your area of research, do you like to now know how to write? So writing means writing either a research paper, a conference paper, journal paper, or you might be starting to write your thesis. So for that, I would like to uh, introduce you to the first AI tool for writing literature review and summary, which is called Research Rabbit. So let me open that one. Now, Research Rabbit is kind of a Spotify of research. So if you have ever used uh, Spotify, uh, you know, Spotify is actually having collections of some music albums, right? 
it can you know recommend some music uh, depending on what you have heard or listened previously so the research rabbit is such things now i can see ahdmi ask what is explained paper explained paper ahdmi is similar to chat pdf so you just upload the paper and it will try to explain the paper you can ask questions exactly the same very very same uh, like uh, chat chip chat pdf okay so research rabbit let me log in here so as i said it is more like a spotify obviously the, the page doesn't look like spotify but it has a collection of uh, papers you can actually add manually into the collection or you can write a particular topic quantum mechanics or you know bridge construction or whatever and then you can actually uh, put them in certain type of collections you can even connect it with the zotero or any other uh, you know referencing software and uh, then it would start suggesting uh, similar work you can see if i put these three papers here say so these are these are the 1642 papers doing similar work uh, authors suggested authors link content and you can you can do a range of things so basically it's a collection of uh, you know research papers and and so on so that's the first one next one i would like to show you is elicit i really like elicit i used it as well so let me open that one okay yeah, in elicit again uh, you can ask uh, questions or you can uh, you know let, let's ask a question what is or just writing quantum mechanics i'm just keeping one as an example so when i'm writing quantum mechanics it would actually give me uh, let's let's wait for a few seconds a summary uh, it will suggest few papers and it has access to millions of you know uh, databases of research uh, articles as well so it's a quantum mechanics with 32 citations it would give me a abstract summary and uh, uh, quantum mechanics the relativity theory so what it will actually give you is a list of papers in that area now for writing literature review what you are looking for is you might have a key theme but you like to really substantiate that theme with number of papers doing similar research so you can lead up so you can do the literature search and said then prove that this is the reason i have reviewed 50 papers and it all leads to this research question which i am trying to explore so when writing literature review you are looking for some information about variety of papers you can easily you know find that information and relevance relevant papers using elicit so let's say you got some summary here in that paper so you go through and scheme just the summary of the papers and then you may think okay this is what i like this is what I like. In that case, you can click and you can save them. Yep. And sometimes you really want not just a summary. If you want to, you know, add main findings. So if you click main findings, it will add a column. What are the main findings of these papers, of a selected papers or all the papers? What were the limitations of these papers? You click limitations and it will list all the limitations for you. Isn't it great? Yes, yeah, so this is Elicit. I've been using this uh, for writing research. Obviously, you can't just blatantly just copy paste things from here and there, but you it actually gives you it, it will lead you to useful papers really, really quickly and you can extract information and you can obviously modify it before you use it in your literature search. <clears throat> so that is Elicit. Uh, the next one is also pretty good is called Connected Papers. <clears throat> So, uh, Igor is asking, it is great. Do you need an access to these papers? <clears throat> now, I'm not 100% sure if you can download these papers. It will suggest you the paper, it will give you the summary, and it will <clears throat> give you more information about, right, you know, limitations and pros and cons and stuff like that. But uh, access to the papers, probably you might have the, you know, you go through the uh, Science Direct or Google Scholar, but yeah, in that repository of that Elicit, they would have some for the whole paper, but it may not give you the full paper from Elicit website. <clears throat> yep, 
So connected papers is something uh, I like as well. Uh, my logins work. Continue with Google. But connected papers is again kind of uh, very useful in writing, you know, some kind of literature search where you are trying to show a kind of a mind map of papers you have used to to show the importance. Sorry, uh, to click this. Just a few more seconds. <clears throat> Yeah, so it basically gives you uh, the whole mind map of variety of papers you've been using. I forgot the exact word, probably Dr. Arti or Anna can remind me what these are called. So you can actually go to, through any of this such type of mind map. And you can actually see that you're looking into a specific area and uh, you selected any one of the paper then what are the other papers connected to that exact area? You can see the interlinking between variety of papers on a huge map. So that map would be quite useful. And in literature search, this type of maps, if you create using connected papers, you can actually show this uh, type of uh, map into your paper. And thank you, uh, Dr. Arti and Anna, it's called bibliometric analysis. So this is called bibliometric analysis, uh, which you can actually create using the citations you've been using and then uh, use this uh, bibliometric analysis in your papers. So that's there. And there are then other similar one as well. I want you to explore because I, I have given you more than enough resources. I won't be able to go through each one of them, but they have their own capabilities. You can go through open read and site space similar to research rabbit and elicit. So now I'm going to the third one before. But before I go through that, did you understand? Are you following me? Please give me a smiley face or a thumbs up if you understood writing research uh, using, you know, variety of these AI apps. <clears throat> Thank you, Mohammed. Shasha, Narth, appreciate it. Thank you, Anna. OK, going to the uh, next part, which is again following uh, through the same topic writing. But now I'm going into the data analysis and graphics. So data analysis and graphics to actually showcase this one we will take a little bit more time. But what I will do, I will not actually show you the demo. I will, I will just talk about what these are. So usually we use Excel, right? Uh, Excel or Power BI are also quite useful tools to create your graphs. Uh, but there are some AI tools also available, and one of them is uh, Julius AI. I hope I have signed in to that. <clears throat> Let me continue with Google. <clears throat> so, uh, Julius AI basically, you have a spreadsheet, a huge spreadsheet of something, and uh, you'd like to actually uh, analyze that spreadsheet. So let me just show you a demo if they have something here. <clears throat> I think they are showing something else now, not this one. I can close this one and you can basically, yeah, create, you know, visual charts. In your thesis or your research paper, you got some data, but you really want interactive, sometimes interactive, sometimes non-interactive 3D charts or 2D chart, uh, bar graph. Uh, it, it can also create, you know, 3D interactive charts. So you, you have a few research papers here as, as a dot point. You can actually turn it around and click this and see what's, what's in it. So it's pretty good, but I don't have a spreadsheet and it will take a long time to actually upload that spreadsheet. But I want you to try when you are writing a paper and you like to create some charts and graphs, I would highly encourage you to use Julius AI, which is totally free. Most of the resources I'm showing you today, guys, is, are, are, are usually free. They might have a paid or pro version if you are willing to pay them a bit more. And uh, second one in terms of uh, writing is Origin Lab. Now, Origin Lab is ex not exactly an AI tool, but they have some free version and it will allow you to create some charts and graphs and so on. And uh, uh, that's quite useful in your research. Now, most of the students would get six free six months learning Edison, which will be quite useful if you're writing a thesis. 
uh, you can just subscribe with uh, your education even even lecturers can subscribe to this free six months learning edition for all students and uh, this will be also helping you creating charts and graphs and and, and so on so that's that origin lab and then going to the next one uh, i'll be skipping this one it's a similar one but then graphics now you like to create some you know really good graphics uh, some some unique images let's say uh, let's let's go to this webpick ai i really like webpick ai and blockhead labs for creating your own custom graphics so let's see how the, does it work <clears throat> Okay, so I'm already signed in. I can write, I am actually, you know, I really like some machines. I like to see lathe machines. So lathe machine on Mars. I would like to see how lathe machine would look like on, on Mars. Let's see, let, let it create. So there you go. It created a lathe machine sitting on the Mars, land of Mars. You can see, you know, NASA has actually put some rovers there, but I have managed to put a lathe machine on, on Mars. But what I'm trying to say that you can actually create custom uh, images. Uh, you just need to give the prompt really carefully what you really want. If you want to say, I want some kind of machine floating on ocean or whatever, or just in a workshop area, it, it is easily doable. And second one is blockhead labs. So I want you to actually try this Webpick AI on your end. Let's do it. Can you please uh, click uh, because you have the access to the Padlet. Go to Webpick AI right now and try to search whatever you want. Try to you know draw something and then let me know what did you search. I give you a couple of minutes to do it. So I'm searching something else, a robot working in a workshop. Let's see. So you can run your imagination <clears throat> and you can create your custom robot. If you are working on some kind of industrial automation, you know, create a robot working in a workshop. There you go. Your robot is working in the workshop. You can download it. You can use it in your research paper. So it's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, Dr. Shasa, uh, can you please let me know how much time or I have already exhausted my time limit? Uh, that's all right. You can continue. That, that's so interesting. <laughs> okay. That's good. So I'm just waiting if someone else has tried something else using Webpick AI. One more minute. Oh, Shasa saying uh, civil engineering designing a bridge. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah. I like Mars so much, so I'm gonna create a bridge connecting two mountains on Mars. There you go. On Mars, we make the bridge, Shasha and Igor must be very happy. <laughs> you can see even some vehicles going through. <laughs> yes, Anna is happy as well. So, uh, yeah, it's beautiful. So, okay, let's move on. Probably you can try your imaginations, run wild and uh, try a few things. Uh, the next one is Blockhead Labs. So Blockhead Labs is also an image creator, but this would give you a 360 degree image. And that's really, really fascinating. You can see, you know, a few examples which might be already there on them, or you can actually write something similar to what I have written there, a bridge on Mars, you click it, and you can actually see three 
360 degree. It actually creates the whole 3D, which you can rotate around and you can see everything in that image. Obviously, the, this type of 3D images might not be useful for uh, probably a paper or thesis, but it could be useful in your conference presentation. It would look awesome if you put something like this, obviously, if you are designing a bridge or something technical rather than just a natural uh, beauty like this. So that's uh, Craft 360, uh, which is Blockhead Labs. All right, before I move on, uh, are you following me? Give me a smiley face or thumbs up if you are following me or ask me a question if you have any. Thank you, Mohammed. Okay, that brings us to the last section. I'm not seeing, seeing lots of thumbs up, smiley face. Yes, thank you, Mohammed Nimal. Thank you, Vishal and Shasha. <clears throat> oh, Igor is stuck in, in the bridges. Okay. Okay, the last section is about publishing research papers. So you have actually understood the topic starting from the beginning, understood the topic. You have started writing your literature review and summary. You have created some beautiful graphs and images. And then you like to now publish the paper. You have written the paper, you want to publish the paper. But, you know, publishing paper is a daunting task because you have to, you know, make sure everything is correct, your language, your grammar, your plagiarism checks, and that's all is about when I'm talking about in this AI tools for publishing research papers. So one of them is Trinka. So similar to Trinka, you might have heard Grammarly, right? So Grammarly is a popular one, which is usually for generic uh, grammar and language check. But Trinka is similar to Grammarly, which is more for academic writing. So you can use both actually Grammarly and Trinka. So I'm going to show you what Trinka can do for you. So it can actually proofread your file. You can drag and drop. You have written a word file, 30, 50 pages, whatever. Drop it here. It will proofread for you. What I did actually, I actually downloaded a random uh, submission. I dragged and dropped here, which is this here. And it actually gave me some 50% score. And I'm showing you that paper. So it's an already published paper. And it is still giving me that you can actually correct the sentences. Look at this. So it actually do full check, language check, tone check, and spelling check, and everything. So that's quite useful, isn't it? You don't have need a second set of eyes. Obviously, you need to still review what they have suggested. But but yeah, that's kind of a second set of your eyes. So that's Trinka. It it actually you know claims to do a lot of other things as well. It can check citation plagiarism, journal finder, but mainly I would highly recommend you to, for proofreading. Okay, so that's there. And uh, then last one is uh, either use Turnitin because with EIT, we have Turnitin plugin already built in into your DNG, uh, you know, Moodle page. So you can use Turnitin plagiarism checker to see the similarity score, whether it's like 5%, 20%, and so on. So I'm not going to go for Turnitin because Turnitin resources are already with us. I'm going to talk about Plague AI. So Plague AI is a plagiarism checker and uh, it basically is very simple. I don't need a demo. You just upload your paper here and it would then give you the similarity score. How much is the plagiarism detected in a particular document so that you can correct or rephrase, revise those sections and then your, your, you have very low similarity score at the end. So that is your Plague AI. And uh, I think that's about it. I have given you a lot many tools in half an hour time. And uh, I would like to again remind everyone, especially all the DN students and also faculty, that please refer to EIT's AI policy. If you're you know, studying somewhere else, you, know, you should always know AI policy of that particular college or university. All the tools I've shown here are supporting tools only. You can't really write the entire thesis or entire research paper using one single tool and, and then claim it to be yours. That's unethical. So ethical usage of these AI tools are, are encouraged, but uh, you know, don't use it you know, in a random fashion. So use it, use all of this with caution. 
so with that guys uh it's more kind of a q and a if you have got any question please feel free to ask me in the chat box thank you very much melind uh so we may have uh one or two questions because of the time sure. um, yeah so yeah if any of you have any question or want to discuss something with dr melind you may have your hands up or you may put your question or comments in the chat box. Wow, bravo, okay. All right, uh, so um, actually, Melinda, I have a question regarding, um, so would, if we are using some of these AI tools, will that trigger some uh, academic misconduct concerns? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for for example, if if we are using if the students are using Grammarly or whatever AI yeah, tools that you recommended here for proofreading, so is is that will that be a concern? No, if you are using Grammarly or Trinka, for example, for for proofreading and it proofread read it, and if you just accept those changes, but make sure you as a human, you will need to still review the sentence structure and the spelling they have corrected. To make sure it's correct because whether whatever ai is suggesting you whether it's correct authentic or not that's your job to do you, so if you if you just review and revise as needed that should be fine it shouldn't be affecting your academic integrity mm -hmm. uh, but if you are using any research writing research tools like research rabbit or elicit if you are copying and pasting stuff from there it would be just a quick summary or abstract make sure you rephrase and write it in your words as well. These summaries which these AI tools provide you are more to actually get your attention to the key key papers very quickly. Rather than write, you know, reading 500 papers, you can just go scheme through 100 papers and find your five, 10 papers very easily and get the key information. So you can use some information to write in your paper, but do not just blatantly copy paste stuff from the AI tools. That's my recommendation. All right. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm sure that this topic be incorporated in the orientation program. Yes, that's a good suggestion. Yeah, we are. Yes. We can, yeah, think about that. Right. Uh, probably we are going to have this in the next uh, orientation session. Maybe. Sure. Thank you, Shasha. Before you all go, guys, uh, I, may I ask you, uh, how did you find these AI tools for research workshop? If you could select something here and if you have any comment comment you can write in the chat box uh, or you can write uh, just click one of these options it would give me some feedback basically but you can simply write in the chat box if you don't have access to the padlet all right everyone thank you so much for attending this workshop it was a pleasure uh, conducting this workshop for you have a good day take care bye Thank you. Thank you, Melin, for such an eye-opening session, not only for the DNG students, but also for our academics, I do believe. Um, well, because of the time, now we have to conclude this session. Uh, so we need to move on to the student, student presentation. So may I please request you to join the student presentation through the link in the DNG conference schedule shared with you. And we are going to come back uh, in this room for the last uh, expert presentation, uh, which will happen in uh, 12.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time or 2.30 a.m. UTC. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you later.